Hello and welcome to another little lesson on some of the most difficult things to do in science. And this is about measuring volume. And we're going to find out a bit more about volume, but we know it's how much room or space something takes up. And we're going to find we use lots of liquids to do our volumes. We find it a bit harder to measure the volume of gases, but we're going to look at the volume of liquids. And so we use something that looks like this, which is a measuring cylinder, and it helps us accurately measure things. And as we can see, when a close-up look at this, we see that the water actually has a curve. It's not flat, it's a curve. So when we're measuring it, we measure the bottom of the curve. Now the curve is actually called the meniscus and we hold it up to our eye level so that we can ac accurately measure it because if we don't, we measure the wrong value and our results are not accurate anymore and it becomes very dubious as to how good our results are. All right, so let's look at the first obvious question. What is volume? Volume is basically how much space something takes up. And when we talk about the space that we take up, we normally use special units. And you might notice on some of our equipment in the science lab, we've got cm cubed, which means cm times cm times cm. All right, and that's cubic centimeters and that is a measure of it. Another common one used outside of the science lab is a thing called a litre. Notice the spelling. It comes from the French. And that's why the R is first. Now when we are doing these, we are probably going to spend more time using this cm cubed. But we're very, very lucky because one cm cubed is the same as one millilitre. In other words, one thousandth of a litre. So if we go between those two units, they're actually identical. So let's look at our, what we've got here. When we are accurately measuring something, we must use the most accurate thing to do it. So if I want something to be accurate, I need something on the side to help me work out how much I've got. And if we look down here, there are lines all the way down to about here on this piece of glass cylinder, which we call a measuring cylinder or graduated cylinder, and these help me work out how much I've got. Now, we've got graduated cylinders of various size in the lab, so you choose the one that is best for the volume of liquid you are going to use. I hope that very soon you won't be talking about amount of liquid, you'll be telling me all about volume, the same as when we talk about the amount of atoms, we talk about mass. All right, so I've got these three things we commonly used in the lab. We've got a beaker, a 600 mil beaker, and it's got marks up the side too. But look at the gaps between them. They are 100 apart. So telling how much we've actually got in there is ridiculously difficult. So let's put it this way. We are going to not use one of those. So please make sure whenever you are dealing with volumes, no. Or rather, I should change the red. No. This one down here has no marks on the side. So how can I tell where the water level is and how much is in there? This is a boiling or test tube. So again, no. We don't use those at all. And this is what we need to remember. This one has the marks down the side. This one will be the one that gives us the best possible answer, so this is the one we should use. And it's a measuring cylinder, as I said before. All right, so let's look at this one. Now what I've taken is a measuring cylinder that is going to, and I'm gonna to switch to the whole idea, instead of the little finger, I'm gonna use this, an arrow to help me out. Now this goes to a maximum of 10. So I can't measure anything more than 10. So this would be a zero to 10. So if I'm measuring a small amount of liquid, I can use this. So let's have a look here because it tells us a lot. If I go between six and eight, I've got one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten differentials. So if I say this, there are the ten lines between there, and I've just counted them for you, each of those lines is equal to two on ten, because it goes between six and eight, that's two, divided by ten, or 0 0.2. So this means that this is 6.2, 6.4, 6.6, 6.8, 7.2, 7.4, 7.6, 7.8, 8, and uh, likewise above. Now when I've got it there, the red arrow points at exactly 7.2. Now each one of these measuring cylinders is slightly different, so I need you to pay very, very careful attention to that. Now let's go to the next one. The next biggest one we have there measures up to a grand total of 25 cm cubes. All right, we see the numbers. The major lines are at 20, 15, like our major lines on the 10 were at 2, 4, 6, 8. Mm -hmm. So again, we look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There are 10 between 15 and 20. So in 5 mils, I've got 10 lines, so that means that each line corresponds to half a cm cubed difference. So then if I start down here, I see that I've got 15, 15 and a half, 16, 16 and a half, 17, 17 and a half, 18, and where the red line is, the red arrow, big red arrow, is 18 and a half. I hope that's nice and clear. The next biggest one up is when we're measuring a little bit more, and this time we're measuring 50. Maximum is we can measure accurately is 50. And again, we go the big lines are 50, 40, 30. So between 30 and 40, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I've got 10 lines. <coughs> 30 and 40, difference is 10. So 10 divided by 10 or each one of these lines correspond to one cm cubed. So that is 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. Alright, so if it's exactly there, the bottom meniscus is exactly on that line, I would have 37 cm cubes of liquid. Now to the biggest one. The biggest one we've got measures up to 100 cm cubes, right? If it goes above there, you can't measure it accurately. The same with all of these. If it goes above the top number, you don't know. You're guessing. So let's look at between 80 and 90. Right? We've got the major signs between 100, 90, 80, 70, every 10. So let's go between 80 and 90. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 lines. So this tells us that I have 1 cm cubed differences. So let's look at this one. There is 70, there is 71, 72, 73, 74, 75. So that line there is 76. So we can see that each one of them, the lines, each line difference between the next one line and the next corresponds to a different amount. In the big ones, it corresponds to one cm cubed. In the smaller one, it corresponds to smaller amounts or parts of a cm cubed. So let's see how you can go with this. What I'm going to give you is a series of these containers and they've got coloured liquid in them. I want you to look at where the bottom of the meniscus, see it's a big black line there? I want you to see this and then I want you to tell me how much liquid I actually have. All right, this is in a 25 cm cubed one. Mm 
Next, I'm in a 100 cm cubed measuring cylinder. I want to know that red line, how much liquid if the meniscus is on that red line. Now, we're still in a 100 cm cubed container, but the meniscus is there. Now, it's a bit tricky to see, but you better have a look at them. And I want you to tell me how much green liquid I've got this time. I've got the red arrow there to help you. Then I've gone into a smaller one. And I want you to tell me how much green liquid would be there. The meniscus is just touching that line. So we have that much volume in there. So your turn to tell me that one. One more. I've got some blue lines. Notice the meniscus is blue in this case. How much liquid do I have in that container? Now, a really tough one. You can see I've got some numbers there at the side. I've got some orangey liquid in this container. I want you to tell me how much I have there. 